Welcome to this edition of the First Aid Show. In this video, we hear from Emily on how she coped with finding out she had epilepsy. So I can't pinpoint the first seizure because I went two years without telling anyone about it because I didn't realise it was unusual, but I think it gradually built up and I was realised I was losing time out of my day and I know that I'd, I'd know that I'd feel something, I'd go to the bathroom, something would happen but I, don't, I think I was unconscious for that bit. I'd looking back and I did it all together. And then I'd spit and then it'd be over. I was watching a YouTube video of, it was just, it was a YouTuber that I was into at the time and they had a little girl. And she was, she crossed her eyes trying to be funny and just kind of pulled her face. And people in the comments were saying, it looks like she's having an aura before a seizure. And then people explaining what that was. So I Googled that and it literally matched my symptoms perfectly. But then I felt like, I felt stupid going to my mum and telling her that or anyone, like my stepdads, my dad's my stepmom, anyone. So I didn't say anything. And then eventually my stepdad saw one and then he told my mum and I went to the doctors. I, I know that I, I don't remember parts of it. So for example, once I had one at school and my friend sent me to student reception to tell my mum. I knew that I had one and I had one in Tutor, the other side of the building, but I don't remember the, the journey to walk in to student reception, even though I was conscious, but I, it was just gradually coming back because I don't remember that. But I remember being there, and that was when I realised I do. It is a problem. <laughs> I do think that the, the feeling of an aura is very similar to nerves. So I think sometimes I get confused with it. So last year, when I was taking my GCSEs before the maths one, which was my biggest worry, I was really nervous, and I, I confused that with an aura, and I got myself into a state in the exam and started crying <laughs> in the exam hall, thinking that something was going to happen. And I ended up sitting outside with the exams lady. Um, and talking about it and I ended up having, we had to send in all of the hospital records to prove that the, the reason I might not have done so well is because I thought I was going to have a seizure. I don't know if I was going to, I might have confused the feeling with nerves, but nerves, stress, they're probably the biggest two just because the feeling is so similar to an aura. I might have had one or two when I didn't know I was going to have one and that's the worst because I can't prepare myself because I can't sit down or I can't tell someone, I can't hold on to someone. It affects me that there's stereotypes behind it. That's the biggest problem, I think, for me. Because they're assuming that they're on the floor shaking and it's caused by flashing lights. That is a stereotype. So they assume you've got to put them on the floor in the recovery position and that's how you sort it. But for me, it's not. It's just sit me down, make sure there's nothing in my mouth if I'm eating and to kind of keep me calm afterwards because I don't know what's happened. I just want to carry on like normal. So in PE once we were doing trampolining, I knew something was going to happen. I'd walked out of the room with my friend, but I straight away wanted to go back afterwards because in my opinion, nothing had happened. My seizures last between three and five minutes normally, but I have had some that have been 30 seconds, or sometimes they're a bit more, so between sort of five and eight minutes, but that's normally the recovery period of gaining consciousness and becoming sort of normal again. There, there is a little bit of thought that it could be an absence seizure, but normally it's the complex focal seizure. My family didn't know that I had epilepsy until I was diagnosed. My grandparents were very worried, they were asking a lot of questions because they didn't understand it and I think that's a generational thing as well, they just, it wasn't normal for them to know much about it. Um, my family sort of at home, we, it wasn't, it was a bit odd because we just carried on as normal. It was just life then because we'd been having these seizures for a while and we knew they were happening. So once we got a diagnosis sort of about six months after the initial GP visit, when we got the diagnosis, it was weird because I remember, I remember going home and saying, I've got epilepsy, but that was it. Life just carried on. And if I had a seizure, I had a seizure, but they're mostly at school. They didn't affect much home life. Yeah, I'm on 600 milligrams of carbamazepine. I take that in the morning and evening. It's helped massively. It stopped the seizures. So I'm happy with that. But to start with, they put it on, I think I started on sort of 200 milligrams twice a day and that wasn't enough that I was still having seizures for about six months after that so then they bumped it right up to 800 gradually over a few months but they bumped it up massively and that, I, that made me dizzy a lot of the time so then we reduced it down to 600 gradually and it's been it's stopped the seizures since then for a long time. If I miss a dosage um, which has happened quite a few times <laughs> over the last 15 months it happens from doing stuff if I'm tired I go to sleep um, my skin feels very dry and it makes me feel ill because it's so dry and my hair feels dry even after the one dose and my mouth feels odd as well and then it takes about three days of getting back into the medication for that to happen again. At one point I thought I wouldn't ever be able to drive and now next, next month I could be driving 
and I can get my provisional and I can do everything that's normal. I think there's been some good opportunities come out of it. At school last year when I um, did a presentation on misconceptions of epilepsy, that, that was a positive thing because I feel like although it was only four other people and a teacher, they understood it a lot more. My teacher was crying, so I think I did a good job. In the future, I just want to carry on becoming more and more normal, so hopefully at some point, when I go to neurologists, they'll say that I can reduce the medication, maybe down to nothing, and see how that goes. Um, that's, that's kind of my next big goal, to get off medication and see if it was hormones that caused it and if that maybe, if that caused the epilepsy and maybe that would have stopped by then because I'd be a bit older. And then that will mean that I, if I'm off medication, that means that there's no worry about taking it and that, because that's a restriction, I've got to take it at certain times, sort of within a few hours in the morning and evening. Obviously not everyone needs to know everything because that's unrealistic because not everyone's going to want to understand epilepsy but if you know someone, do your research and don't just assume that it's caused by flashing lights because that drives me mad. My life has changed massively. <laughs> you feel like you have to tell people quite early on when you meet them in case it's a problem for them. So like getting, getting my first job I felt like that was the first thing I had to tell them even though they, they weren't that bothered about it, they just sort of took the letter from the hospital that explained everything and that was all they needed to know. Making sure that people know that I'm me and I'm not defined by it is a massive thing. Mainly it's just sort of hiding that stereotype and proving that I am me, I am normal. I'm sort of nearly 15 months seizure free now. I, I am becoming normal <laughs> after so many years of not being normal.